Alright guys, welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to convert image modes from a photo. So right now all of these photos, Baby, Bucky, all of these are RGB and actually 99% um, of the pictures you see on your computer, on your smartphone, on your tablet, those are all RGB because that's what computers and electronics they work with easiest, they display it really easy and crystal clear. However, there are going to be times when you want to convert your image to something else. For example, your printer, um, chances are that it doesn't use RGB. Whenever you print out um, like a picture, it usually prints in four colors. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is black. I don't know why they just didn't use B. But there are going to be times where you want to take an RGB image and convert it to something else. So again, um, if you ever print something out then it's a smart idea to convert it to CMYK first but uh, just for this example I'll show you guys how to convert it to black and white now there are a couple different ways that you can make a black and white image you can just take your RGB image and remove all the basic saturation from it and end up with a black and white image but that isn't a true black and white image that's just a, um, an RGB that looks like a black and white one so if you actually want a true black and white um, photo then what you can do is you can take your original photo actually this is called baby and you call something called convert now convert basically says okay what format do you want to change this to so by default this is RGB so if we called this nothing would happen because it's already RGB we can also do CMYK for printing, but just for this example, um, type L. Now L stands for luminance. It basically means black and white. They should have named it something a little bit more clear, but apparently they decided that L was the best uh, symbol for black and white. So now if we take this new object, which is pretty much this image of a baby now converted to a black and white file type, check this out whenever we show this run main black and white now if you guys are like alright so how do I know that this isn't just the RGB image still and I don't know they just like remove some color from it so right now keep the file open and if you go to channels you see that we don't have those RGB red green blue channels anymore we just have this one channel just for black and white so that way we can verify that indeed it does work and uh, well I'm not lying alright hold on let me adjust my microphone a little bit so that was kinda of boring so now since you guys had to suffer through that I'll show you guys something really cool now pillow or pill hold on Ugh, disgusting alright so Right now we've been using a bunch of functions from the image class, but it also has another um, class that is actually a lot cooler in my opinion, and that's image filter. Now this class comes with a bunch of cool built-in um, filters that you might use like blur, if you ever want to blur your image, if you ever want to uh, do something like find the edges of it, that's a nice little cool effect. <coughs> oh my, that uh... That was embarrassing, but uh, probably not even going to edit that out. All right. So first, let me show you guys how to blur your image. So do we want to use this? Actually, let me use Bucky. Actually, all right. Let's use Sister. Because look at this. Look how adorable I look in this one. I am one hot piece of meat. All right. So Sister sister and just make any object I'm gonna name my blur because I'm pretty much just gonna blur the image so if we take sister that original image and we add a function called filter to it what this does is it allows us to pretty much pass in one of these parameters and the parameter I want to pass in is blur so pretty much from the image filter class we're gonna call a function called filter and it's gonna blur this image so let me just show you guys real quick so blur dot show 
is pretty much the same image as before, but now it is blurred. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So as you can see, um, you're like, okay, when the heck would I want a blur image because this is just stupid. It like um, is the same image, but less quality. Actually, if you ever, um, I'll show you guys an example, and this is actually a really useful tip. If you ever have an image like a flower or something, and you know on those high-end cameras, when you get that depth of field, it looks like the background's kind of blurry. If you ever want to add a photo filter like that, then what you can do is you can actually um, pretty much overlay this blurry image on, on top of the regular crystal clear image and blur it as it fades out, and it'll look like, kind of give you the fake effect of depth of field. If you don't know what depth of field is, then just ignore everything I just said because um, not important. I'll show you guys the effect later on. All right, so another one that you guys might find pretty cool is detail. And actually, let me write both of these first. And what this does is it pretty much just gets the detail of your image. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, you'll see it later on. Actually, let's uh, name this one Edges. And the property is Find Edges. There you go. So now we already saw Blur. So now let's go ahead and print Detail, see what that one does, and also Edges. Actually, let me clear this out. All right, so run all those, make sure I didn't do anything wrong. All right, so this is blur, we already saw this. This is detail, and uh, without um, comparing them side by side, they kind of look weird. But if you look at the other one, then um, it, it's pretty much like the opposite of blur. It gets the detail, and you guys can see if you compare them side by side. And this one, obviously, what it does is it finds the edges, its best guess, and it highlights them. So again, you probably just wouldn't want to use a standalone, but combined with some other filters and effects, it can uh, produce some pretty cool image effects. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is image filter for some really basic built-in filters. And again, the power of this actually comes when you combine it with other stuff. And we're going to be taking a look at that later on. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.